G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. So here in front of me, I have some spiral up cuts, some spiral down cuts, and just a standard straight bit for comparison. Now, these spiral cut bits perform a similar function in many ways to your standard straight cut bits, but they're significantly more expensive. And so you might wonder, why would I be spending a whole lot more money for a bit that does kind of the similar job? Although they do essentially the same thing as a straight cut, there are some areas where they really excel and will give you results that you just can't achieve with a straight cut and for many applications that's well worth the money that you need to spend to get these exceptional little bits. So in understanding why a spiral bit even exists, I find it helpful to think about the vague evolution of a router bit. The, um, the most common straight bits have two blades that run straight up and down, directly perpendicular to the shank. And they do a good job, but each blade, every time it comes in contact with the wood, is hitting the whole face of the blade against that piece of wood in one little whack. Just does it over and over again. In order to make those cuts smoother, uh, router bit manufacturers have started putting these blades on a slight angle, which means instead of the blades hitting the timber at one time, they start to slice through from the top to the bottom in this case. Uh, and that allows you for a, to have a smoother cut and it allows the motor to work a little bit less hard because you're not just thumping through the wood in each pass. Uh, spiral router bits take that concept one step further by angling the blade on a much steeper angle until it's almost like a drill bit. And so the cutting motion isn't in one thumping uh, chisel blade hitting the timber at each time. It's a tiny fraction of the blade as it curves around spiraling through the timber. So because you have a spiral blade, it means that there's actually constantly a piece of the blade in contact with the timber. You don't have what you have with these standard uh, straight bits where you have blade contact, then none for half a rotation, then blade contact. When you're using one of these bits, especially with really hard timber, and you're trying to cut out a lot of material, you can get what most people call shatter. So it's basically the motion caused by each blade thumping into the wood, one after the other. Because you have constant blade contact with these, you're actually getting a slicing motion rather than that thumping motion, and you dramatically reduce that shatter, which gives you a much smoother cut, and it means the motor from your router is working way less hard. Okay, so there's a couple more benefits to spiral bits, and this applies to both up cut and down cut. I'll explain the difference between those in a second. Because they're essentially like a drill bit, they're solid carbide and they have blade right across the end tip on both the up cuts and down, down cuts bits. They, uh, they plunge really well. You don't have the issue that you might get with a straight bit where you've got that flat piece of non-cutting stock in the center there and that's gonna stop you plunging all the way down. These, got, these guys just don't have that problem and it allows you to do really deep plunges really easily. One of the other features, because you have continuous blade contact and just a much longer blade surface, these bits stay way cooler. And that means they're gonna stay sharper for longer, but also means you're not gonna get burn marks in the timber, which can be really hard to remove, uh, and also just unsightly, smoky, unpleasant in general. So, less heat, uh, less smoke, less burn marks in the timber. So another application where these guys really excel is if you've got uh, really difficult or highly figured timber. So the reason that these do a better job is because you're not slamming into the wood with each blade, which has the tendency to cause large chips and can tear out little pockets of a nicely figured burl. You've got a continuous slicing motion here, which actually will slice past those difficult bits of really figured timber and will prevent them from tearing out. So you can get much nicer results on, on tricky wood that you really want to maintain the integrity of that surface. So the last feature which applies to both up and down cut bits that I want to talk about is basically the direction of the cut. So the effect that this has is where the chips are going to go and which edge of your cut is going to be really nice and clean. If you're looking at a straight cut bit, as I said, you've just got blades hitting the timber square. 
the, uh, the chips are just going to accumulate in this area. There's no real reason for them to go out the top except for just general pressure and build up of crud inside the, the router bit. So you can, if you're doing really deep cuts into timber, if you, if you have managed to plunge down, you can accumulate uh, chips in there really easily. With these spiral bits, they have a direction like a drill bit. And when you're using a drill bit, the, uh, the chips move up the shank and come out the top of the hole. So a spiral down cut bit also cuts directionally, but it's kind of cutting in the opposite direction. It's actually going to be pushing the chips downwards, and that can have a benefit for some applications, but it's not going to be for plunging. Because with the spiral bits, the blades are actually hitting the timber on an angle, that's what's causing the chips to go up or down in, in each case. But that's also what causes one of the really cool benefits of uh, these bits, is that the blades, as well as cutting the timber across, uh, across the face, it's also cutting down from either the top or the bottom, depending which one you're using. And that means that you're actually getting a really smooth, razor sharp edge on one of the surfaces, either the top or the bottom, depending on which bit you're using. Now, that can be really important if you're using veneers, which have a tendency to lift and chip, or if you're using malamine, which is also kind of has a tendency to shatter and, and chip away. Uh, even if you're just using a really nice timber, like if you're doing the top of a table and you really want that edge to be just razor sharp, then these will give you a much better line than you might get with a straight bit. I want to walk through some of the more specific uses for each of these, just so you can understand where you might use an up cut versus a down cut, and also the advantage of being able to have these bits with the bearings, which is a unique feature to these Torcata bits. There aren't very many uh, spiral bits available at all with bearings and so it is really handy and it opens up some other possibilities. So I want to start by talking about some specific applications of spiral upcut bits. Now as we said before with an upcut bit the chips are coming back at you when you're using a handheld router. So what that means is that you have very good chip ejection. If you're doing a deep cut, those chips are just gonna keep flying out. If you've got a vacuum attached to the router, it's gonna suck them out really cleanly. You're not gonna have a lot of stuff building up in the hole. That means you can do quite fast cuts. One of the things to consider though, is if this is cutting through the timber and you've got your chips flying out at high speed, it also has a tendency to slightly feather those edges. Now, the top edge, sorry, of, of if you're cutting a trench, for instance, or a little channel. In a nice, good quality, solid hardwood, that usually won't cause any tear out, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, one thing I have done before is put just a really thin layer of something like packing tape over the, the place where I'm gonna be cutting that trench, and that prevents any tear out, and it works really well. So, because this is acting kind of like a drill, it's actually gonna hold your handheld router into the piece of wood. And conversely, if you're using it on this in a table router, it's gonna hold the piece of wood down onto the table. Now that can help stabilize things in some ways. It's gonna stop the router jumping around. One byproduct of that is if you're cutting a little trench, the bottom edge of the channel on a spiral upcut bit is gonna be really nice and clean. Because these are acting essentially like a drill bit, they also allow you to do really nice, clean uh, mortises in ways that you just can't quite do with a standard straight bit. Because this end acts exactly like a drill bit, you can plunge in as deep as you want. Now, ideally, you probably wouldn't want to plunge in a full 50 mil and try and mortise out that whole section in one go. It's just far too much pressure on the, uh, on the bit and mainly on your machine. But you can still plunge in and do a few passes without having to do that sort of like floating plunge which you have to do with a standard straight bit. Uh, so really nice mortises, excellent chip ejection if you're creating a nice narrow mortise you're not going to get clogged up with crud in the hole, it's all going to come out the top and get sucked away by your vacuum cleaner. So those are some really good applications for these spiral upcut bits. If you're not cutting a trench but you're actually trying to trim the edge of a piece of timber then you're going to have access to a really nice clean edge on the bottom face, on the face furthest away from the motor, either in a handheld or in a table. And so when that might be uh, really useful is if you have, I don't know, a stool where you want the top edge to be really nice and sharp and you want to run that around on your, uh, on your table router, 
then that top edge is, is what's going to have a really nice clean edge with no tear out because the chips and the timber is being pulled down into the table. Now the inverse is true when you're using a handheld router, you'd want to keep the, the good face down so that the cutting action would be pulling the timber up and actually be creating a really nice face on the, on the underside. Now Torcata also makes these uh, spiral upcuts with a bottom bearing and so that would allow you to do sort of a pattern following application. Say you created a, a interesting shape and you cut that out on your bandsaw and smoothed it off with a sander or however you want then you can put that on the bottom, place your secondary piece on top and use that bottom one as a guide to follow that pattern and duplicate it as many times as you want. Now if you're using an upcut bit then the bottom side of the piece you're working on is going to be the good face so just keep that in mind and that's really important if you're trying to do it in malamine or like a nice veneer or a ply or something. So the final thing that these guys do really well and this kind of applies to the upcut and the downcut is if you are following a pattern around uh, in a, and it's maybe a circle or something where you're going to have access to some grain where you're going to be cutting against the grain which has a tendency for high tear out these because they're not um, because the blade isn't hitting the grain in a way that wants to pull it away it's actually slicing through it you it allows you to do more complex shapes than you could do with a standard uh, straight bit without flipping the timber over and, and trying to follow that grain in the direction that it wants to go. So you'll always need to experiment to get um, the best effect and also I found that these get this, as with all router bits, these get the smoothest finish when you cut cutting off uh, as less, least material as possible. So if you can trim it up with a bandsaw first, get it pretty close to that line and then just cut off a mill or two with these, they work beautifully. I have pushed them through the full width of the blade to do um, full trenches or like full depth cuts in timber and they work fine but I've wanted to go back over them to clean up those cuts a little bit just to get the really glassy edge that these guys can achieve. A down cut bit is actually going to be pushing the timber away from the motor unlike an up cut bit which is kind of pulling it towards it like a drill bit. So. The reason that that can be really beneficial is it allows you to run along the face that you really want to protect, especially in veneers and malamines and composite timbers like that, and you're actually pushing the cut past that edge, which means you get a really nice sharp edge, even cutting across veneers, which have a tendency to lift and splinter. So you're never going to be damaging that top edge uh, as you're cutting. So applications where this might be really useful is cutting a rebate or a trench or a little channel in some really nice veneer or malamine or some other kind of material like that which has a tendency to be damaged easily. But what you have to keep in mind is because these are pushing the timber downwards and that's what's creating that really nice smooth edge, it's also pushing the chips down into the trough. So you can't do really nice deep cuts like you can with a spiral upcut bit. With the down cut bit, you're doing multiple passes. Uh, you're getting a really nice crystal clear edge on the top, but you are pushing those chips down into the trough, which just means you're gonna have to slow down a little bit. You can use these down cut bits for full depth cuts through timber, uh, because the chips are gonna have some place to go. They're gonna be um, shooting away from the motor rather than back up. Uh, you can also use it to do really nice clean edge cuts and edge trims along timber and malamine and ply uh, and of course the chips are going to be going away from the motor. So if you're using a handheld router that means it's going to be pushing the chips down towards the floor and if you're using this in a table router it means the chips are going to be going upwards which you might want to put a guard in place so that they're not just flying into your face. Another thing to keep in mind when you're using these, even though they can give you that really nice clean edge, because rather than pulling the timber into the motor, it's actually pushing it away slightly. You want to make sure you have really good guides in place so that you are getting the benefits of these bits without it trying to jiggle away and move away from the timber. So it's just a matter of working slowly and smoothly to get those really nice clean edges that you're looking for, which you kind of can't really achieve in a lot of cases, especially with something like malamine. Uh, with a straight bit, with a standard straight bit. So I hope that has helped kind of demystify some of the uses and the reasons that you would uh, want to purchase a handful of these spiral bits. 
you've got fantastic smooth cuts, especially in figured wood, with way less chatter than you would have with a standard straight bit. You have access to really clean edges on the top or the bottom, depending on if you're going to be using an up cut or a down cut. You've got the ability to do deep plunges with an up cut, as well as create really nice clean troughs with a down cut. And in the Torcata range, you do have access to these um, follow the pattern following bearings, which as far as I know, and not, not a lot of other companies are, have actually managed to do yet. This spiral bit's so useful. I've been using them far more than I thought I would, and they've definitely uh, earned the money that I spent on them initially, because they just do such great work and create really good results. You can pick these up uh, from Timbercon. They're made by Torcata and you can grab them on the Timbercon website at timbercon.com.au or in either of their stores in Perth and in Melbourne.